Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for After Press. We'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning. Now we have our guest who's going to review the papers for us. We have Chris Candy Wandu. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Merry Christmas to you and all our viewers across the globe. Same Merry you, Christmas. Sir. Same to you. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so we're going Thank to go you. straight into it. And we're starting with Daily Trust this morning. Um, I think the one that screams loudly to me, it's not the major headline, but this says how Naira scarcity, devaluation, inflation, and others dominated economy in 2023. Um, 2023 is almost over. We have just a few days left here, but we're still seeing the cash crunch even at this time. And some would say, yes, it's dominating our economy, but we want to hear from you. All of these things I have mentioned, the naira scarcity, the devaluation, the inflation and others, have they really dominated our economy? And what has the impact been so far, even from your personal experience? Yes, I mean, it is, and uh, you know, uh, what we are seeing now is just a result of what happened at the beginning of the year, or towards the end of last year, uh, when we started with the uh, new Naira redesign, or recoloring as I call it. And um, before you knew it, uh, Nigerians were now buying Naira, with Naira, and that which uh, had a lot of effect on it, uh, had a lot of effect on the economy. We lost so many people lost their lives. Um, so many edifices, edifices we were born. Banks were born. We saw women fighting in banks. We saw men tearing their clothes fighting. We saw bank um, uh, staff and officials scaling fence, using ladder to scale fence to run away from banks and rest of And um, everything was uh, equated to, uh, to have started from the policies of the central bank. And then um, also a Mayfield, uh, former governor of Central Bank, Governor Mayfield. And uh, all the blames were heaped on him. Um, then we weathered that storm, and uh, good reasoning uh, prevailed. And later, uh, we had some kind of stability. But the question now is oh, about six months down the line that a Mayfield has been out of the status. So, how come that we are still having the same problem? Mm. And that was the, and the, that is the question I always say. Why people? continue to lay blames on individuals uh, you, you come to realize that at times it might not just be direct uh, it might not be them directly that you, because i don't know i am not an economist but if i remember that how come that we did not envisage what is happening now? and the most annoying part of it is that central bank is not coming out to tell nigeria what is happening all you're telling us is that oh, some people are holding the money oh, I, I don't the same narrative that we are told before we've we been doing the Pre-election, you say that those people are holding this money to use it to buy votes and the rest of that, which was the reason why the federal government was simply decided to recolor or redesign the Naira. But what is the problem now? How come that you have money in the bank and you go to the bank, you cannot access more than twenty thousand Naira within a period like this, during the hillside period that a lot of people are traveling through a period of festivity? And we are short when the when the time was getting closer and some of us were raising the uh, raising this question that when would the central bank come out to be able to speak on the 31st december deadline on the facing out of the old naira notes yeah so that we can be able to have enough new naira notes it took central bank a long time i think it was just about three weeks or two weeks to christmas that first time um, central bank finally came out to say oh no problem and um, based on that the old naira note will remain a legal tender then the Supreme Court finally also made, it, made it a pronouncement of that. But nobody is telling us why we cannot get the money. If you ask me, I don't know. I don't want the banks. I don't want, I've not been to the banks. And the highest I've been paid during this period is just 20,000. Some banks are even giving 10,000. You go to the ATM, so you cannot be able to make any withdrawal. Now, what they are doing now is not challenging us to go to the POS. And you now go to the PS, you want to withdraw 10,000 naira, they charge you to 400 naira and 500 naira. And you continue to ask yourself, what kind of a country is this? Which other part of the world will you see the kind of situation? What are the economic team of the current government? What are they doing? It, it, it baffles me. And it's continuing to continue to go through this route over and over and over and again, and nobody seems to be saying anything. And to me, 
This is unacceptable. It is really, really unacceptable. I can imagine those, if you were ever talking of those of us in the town, all of those are in the remote villages, my village, mm. remote state, your village, and um, other villages, both in the east, the south, south, and the north, who cannot be able to access money at this point in time. This may lead to a lot of uh, problems right. with this system. So let the central bank come back and federal government come out and tell us. We don't have enough. Pop money into the system. That's what we, we know. Get money, pop money in the system. Let's have more money so that this thing can go around. But, but what is happening now is really unacceptable. But people argue that if you pump more money into the system, then inflation goes up. And life, right now, we're looking at inflation at about 23%. So I think that's even something we haven't touched on here, because that's also here. It says devaluation, inflation, and others dominated the economy. How is inflation right now? And I mean, what's the impact? And do we even see a better 2024? Inflation is 23%, it's 28, not even 23%. Even at that rate, do we have the money? Can you go to the bank and collect your money? So an average man on the street, that is, is no, is no brain at all. It doesn't make any sense to have an average. The basic says now we are trying to, we have been, the banks have been trying, or the government have been encouraging people to bring their money to the bank to save. Nigeria don't have this, um, the, uh, what is it now? I, I don't know, we just run short of words. I, I don't know, this is to save money. Mm. The problem has always been the past. Nigerians would rather have their money, keep it in the house, keep it under the if you remember the days, I don't know why you know, <laughs> or not. Yeah. I, I know what <laughs> you're talking about. <laughs> if you remember, that was what we, my brother may understand. That was Sometimes you even dig the, you dig the ground to bury your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> I, a call back into in those days. I think it was a very rich man in one of those days. The man was keeping the money in his uh, millions and millions. Mm. In his house. One day, those are not of because he was a friend. Because there were problems in the bank. You know those banks were failing and before you know right. one bank has failed. Mm. Right? Another bank ACB has failed. One man bank has failed. So people decide to just decide to keep money in their houses. And that in this day became the challenge. So the federal government and the CPA too, they try to reject the architecture to give confidence to people to take their money to the bank, knowing fully well that whenever they want to do. But with what is happening now, an average trader, an average trader that sell cow, an average trader that sells tomatoes or whatever. We don't want to take his or her money to the bank. And that in itself is a problem. So that is why you say that so much money is in circulation. Yes, there's so much money in circulation. But for those who have their money in the bank, how come how come they cannot be able to assess it? It's a contract that you have. It's a contract I have with the bank. A valid contract, as we say in law, is a contract that is signed, sealed, and delivered. So if you had a contract that I should bring my money to the bank anytime I want to, I get it. I now come to your bank, you're telling me that I want to withdraw 100,000, you're telling me that I can, I can only withdraw 20,000. There is a breach of the contract, and I have a right to sue you, to sue your bank for holding on to my money that I cannot assess. And before we do, you know the problem we have in this country, people take things for granted. If it's in other advanced countries, other countries, most of these banks will be sued. In fact, they right. will take billions and billions of dollars and naira in, uh, in, in fine for what they are doing. You can't just do that. Anyhow, keep on to keep people's money and say they cannot withdraw it. Then what you are trying to do is now to stiffen them from accessing their cash with If you remember vividly some uh, some months back in the countries like I think in in, 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 in in India and I think Sri Lanka, one of those two, two countries. So people took had to take God to the banks and force the managers, in fact, take over the bank and say, except you give me my money, I will not leave this bank. And it was that bad. I don't think it has got in, it should get to that point. We should be very, very careful with some of the policies we are debating. But the most important thing is that the Minister of Finance is not telling us anything. The Minister of the Economy is not telling us anything. The Central Bank is not telling us anything. Neither is the bank telling us, uh, telling Nigerians why they cannot access their, bank, uh, their money at this point in time. It's quite unbelievable. The, the annoying thing is that while we're talking about money being in or out of circulation, nobody is even addressing the fact that we could use e-banking and the only way to use e-banking if it is is if it is friendly right. now you i was sitting on a bus with somebody who had just like um uh, 1003 in his account mm. entire account and he was like okay when i get down i'll go to the atm uh, to withdraw the 1000 but now i need to uh, load my um subscribe mm. a daily subscription so he subscribed 300 naira and at the end of the day the, the first alert he saw was the removal of 50 naira. Wow. 
So, so before even they showed him the alert that they have removed the 300 naira, the bank charges were 50 naira removed, which means he cannot collect the 1,000 1, anymore, anymore when he gets to wherever he's going to. So the charges that are coming with the electronic transfers and all that, if it goes at all, because sometimes it fails, the charges are so high that some people do not want to go to the bank to do this. Right. You might say 30 naira here, 50 naira there. Well, it adds so, up. But it adds up, you know, if you're going to the market, for instance, as a woman, you want to buy condiments for your house. You're not buying in bulk because not everybody has the ability to buy in bulk. You go there, you buy tomatoes, 500, you buy this, and you're doing transfers. And you're, you're given for or, each and every for each one of them. transfer, you're, you're, you're paying 50 naira. At the end of the day, you leave that house, the, that market, you spend 10,000 on the goods, and then you spend 3,000 uh, on, on charges. charges. So it doesn't make sense. We're not even talking about this. But well, let's leave the inflation <laughs> thing. Mm. Well, let's go to another thing that the Minister of Aviation was talking about for, so a few weeks ago or a few days ago, as the case may be, he was talking about the fact that Nigerian airlines will be compelled uh, from now on or in the nearest future to make refunds or to be fined for fi flight cancellations. Yeah, or and give them compensation. That. Now this headline is saying, flight delays, cancellations worsen as NCAA pleads with passengers. Now we are still pleading, <laughs> only pleading. Do you think we'll get to that point where the customers will have a say, the customers will have rights that they can fight for, the customers will be treated better than they are treated now? Even with the pronouncement of the minister, this is still happening. Do you think we'll get there, Mr. Wando? Well, if we have the political way to do what we need to do, we'll get there. But if the political way is not there, then nothing will happen. And that is what we talk about, impunity and front court. But um, for us to be able to do that, there's certain agencies of government that are starting with the responsibility of um, making sure that the customer's interest is protected up to do their job. And like, talking about the Nigeria uh, uh, Consumer Protection uh, Agency, uh, yes, I, I don't know the acronym now. But we have a Consumer Protection Agency. And it's their duty to make sure that, not just the airline, in the other parts of the world, if you go to a, a store, a, a, a supermarket, you buy something, and you find out that that store you bought to is, is not the, you know, it's not the best interest of what you so desire, you return it and you get your money. What is is a good form? You get your money back. Now, this is where I travel countries: the United States, Canada, UK. Uh, is this that have bought certain stuffs, even if that is a um, material, good material, shares. And I take it to my and I wait and I find out that um, this one doesn't size me up. I'll go, I'll just go back to that store. In Canada, I just did that recently, I just came back about two months ago. And I told it to the, 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 what the label is on that, that same label is on that page. Right. Take it for me. Mm -hmm. And they ask you want another one or you want to more report. And you say you want to report, they pay back your money. So, but in this country, a lot of it. So why these airlines, like, you are even talking of airlines. My brother, he, 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 during our days of entering buses and luxury buses, you enter a luxury bus from Lagos going to Owe, let me say Owe, my state. And from here, this vehicle, you get to Owe, this vehicle spoils or has the blow fault. Do you know that that vehicle will not, that transport company will not give you back your money? You rather say, come down, go and take another one. So if you say, what of my money? They say, no, I, we have, uh, we have left it and uh, they've taken it at the back end. So those are the kind of impunity. So if we continue to hold the airlines and other agencies um, um, accountable and they continue to pay the necessary fine, let, let, let's get this clear. There's no part of the world where you don't have um, um, flight delay, even in the United States, even in other parts of the world. Yes, there is to be flight delay, but the fact is that what is the time frame? The situation where you are going to, you want to travel to Port Harcourt, you go to the, you apply, you are told that your flight is 7 a.m., you get to the Lagos airport, and they continue to delay your flight. They move it from 7 to 10, from 10 to 12, from 12 to 4, from 4. There have been instances where I was supposed to fly from Abuja back to Lagos, and I spent nine hours at the Abuja airport if I could come back to Lagos. And when you go to them and say, give me my money, they will not be able to give you, so that I can enter on that flight. So it's rather just, I would rather think that the uh, aviation minister should walk the talk rather than just all this blanket talk. 
if uh, it had to take us to enact a law making it compulsory that airlines are not able to fulfill their obligations they, when when you are the, when, when they delay the flight when they do your, delay your flight there's no there, there's no apology there's no compensation but go and miss your flight when they say board and let you get there about two minutes three minutes at their checkpoint they say oh we have closed our check uh, what was it our counter they will not allow you to but they that will delay your own flight for seven hours so as i just think that um, it's just meritorious but except we start testing it i remember there's a time that somebody had sued one of the airlines i can't remember the particular airline and the airline was asked to pay him certain amount for the flight delay disruption and flight delay and it has also been said that sometimes that if your flight is delayed more than an hour or so within this country i remember i can't remember which of the agency of government said that you can ask for a refund but the question you ask yourself can we these people refund it? so in the, the, the our investment industry as it were currently does not stand the test of time this is not the this is not what account stated in his uh, in his laws about air travel our own style of doing this is something only they just say oh due to what's that there's a language that might be used i forgot to know whatever circumstances are beyond our control or delay flight or something something that we have to and they continue delay this flight especially at this period if it is weather related yeah, of course there's nothing you can do about it because if the weather is bad a, a plane cannot fly because that is putting the, uh, the person as well but where you realize that there is no uh, human nature does not play any uh, any part in this then they, they, then this issue of flight delay should just be should not be encouraged at all and something needs to be done about it I've, I've had experience when once when I got to the airport before I was told that oh, it's like that flight for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, when will it go? Will it go tomorrow? Will it go today later? Or the, said we will get back to you. Almost something. Till there. date, I didn't hear anything from them. I had to make uh, alternative arrangements. They just do Hello. what they like. Yeah, and, that's all. and there's no consequence, exactly. so they can as well move. Even if there, there are consequences, you can spend more exactly. than what you want to get. Yeah. <coughs> So you're, you're, you're spending 200000 on a flight and then when you want to get your money back because it was delayed or it was cancelled, you end up spending 500000 You'll be looking at yourself. You'll be like, what, what's, what's, the point? what's the point? 200000 was the point. That's what happens. So I think maybe sometimes that's the trick. They don't want you to fight for that. They, want, they don't want you to come. They want to get your money. So they'll make it more difficult for you to come back. It's because our courts are not the, the people that you can go to and know that you'll have swift judgment. Right mm. now, uh, that brings us to the next thing, the threat to democracy, uh, so to speak. Let me put two unrelated matters together, Mr. Mwandu. Uh, but they are both saying uh, something about our democracy and our judiciary. Kwankwaso holds special prayer in Kano ahead of Supreme Court judgment. It has come to a point where you have to pray before you special can get prayer. judgment. And then up there, on, still on Daily Trust, we, are saying, we saw the headline, Implementation of Tinubu's resolution not a detriment or a detriment of my freedom. That's according to Fubara. A lot of us were here shouting that ah, the president didn't have constitutional right to go there and do whatever he did, uh, whatever resolutions were in favor of one camp and not the other. But now the governor himself is defending it. I that's why I'm saying is this not a threat to democracy where our judiciary. Uh, you will have to resort to prayer and then where the person that you're trying to defend is now coming to defend the indefensible. I, I, I think uh, we need to start on the human. I thought that's where we start from. Uh, we have to start on the human and I want to look at the main headline of the Daily Trust. And um, that should be a kind of concern to me more than any other news that is in any newspaper this morning. The headline, the main the, major the headline. The 145, right? Yes. We'll, we'll, get, be, we'll get to that. Side. We'll get to that. Yes. Yes, I know we'll get to that, but I, it, I, my heart bleeds, and I, I don't think I can talk about any other thing except I, I, except I talk about that issue. That we have over 150 people killed in the last few days in Metro State is something that should be a concern of concern for us. Because even countries that are at war, you don't see this level of killing. Mm. If you look at the Ukraine, um, uh, what do you call it, Ukraine Russian war, you don't get to see where they say 150 people killed it. Where you only see that is the Hamas Israeli war without all this understanding. But on 
conventional war. Why that happens in between Hamas and Israel is because it is a one-sided war. The Hamas don't have the ammunition, they don't have the, the, the power of the, the power to be able to fight back and the rest of them. So that is neither here nor there for me. But when you look at the Ukrainian war, which is what when you see people they say, Oh, three people were killed in Ukraine, um, five people were killed in Kiev, um, the seven people were killed. But in one sweep, you're having over one the last four weekends it has risen to over one hundred and seventy people. And these are human beings. And you continue to ask yourself, how do we how why do this happen over and over again and we don't seem to have a solution? How do we lose human lives and pop with blood as if not as somebody called me from the United Kingdom, yes, somebody, a friend of mine, that she lost her uncle, the daughter, uh, no, the wife, and three kids in that in this particular um, instance in Plato State. And this is not the first time. And you ask yourself, what are our security agencies doing? Yeah, the defense uh, chief, the defense chief, chief is chief. telling Nigerians to take ownership of security. I wonder mm. what exactly. That mean. is the chief of defense staff telling me to take ownership of my security. Then we should be sacked. Then we should disband the army and let us all of us go and start buying AK-47 and keep to defend <laughs> ourselves. That's what he's trying to say. We be saying that the whole chief of defense staff, who is in charge of the navy, in charge of the air force, in charge of the army. And to some extent, also have some supervisory role uh, 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 on the police. To some extent, um, even though we have an NSA, then what are you saying? They are saying that they are saying that you are on your own. Mm. That is, yeah, that, that is everybody to himself, God for us. So that is what the chief of defense. So which is in which country will you have here a defense chief or a security chief saying that kind of a thing? And I ask the question: What is the essence of the essence of governance? The primary essence of governance is the security of life and property Prophecy. of its people. Any government has not been able to guarantee that there is not a government. So this is happening in Plateau State, and nobody is saying they're just telling us, oh, God. and let me take it a both pattern. Several times we have talked about the issue of state policing. Oh, they say no, when you do uh, go into state policing, the, uh, the governors will hijack it and use it. But you ask yourself, even the police force as it is present. Majority of the funding of the police force is by the state government. Go and check it out. Mm. Hey, my brother, you realize that every state, you see every government every time, you see them launching, donating 50 vehicles, donating 100 vehicles, mm. donating the uh, more personal carriers and the rest of them to the police. So what are we talking about? And you realize that even the um, even though they have decided to have some kind of the vigilante group, you can have a thing gone and use it to face somebody that's having AK-47. And I thought that this um, uh, civilian uh, military could have been, we could have come up with something like that, so that most of this, even that be under the supervision, uh, supervision of the Nigerian police or even the military, but all these communities need to be able to arm themselves and be able to hold and be able to defend themselves. If you are coming to my house to attack me, and you know that I'm having an AK-47 or something higher than your own, you will think twice before jumping into my compound. But when look, most of these killers know that these guys are just vulnerable, they don't have any means of um, um, defending themselves, that in itself becomes a problem. And our security chief are telling us, oh, they are doing so much, they've done so much, they've secured Nigeria. But having over 150 people killed in a community or two communities is a no go area. And you know what happens? The government will come out, oh, uh, we sympathize with those, um, those that lost their life, we are going to look into it, and all the perpetrators will be. Dealt with to be arrested and, and ask yourself how many have been arrested and dealt with. That to me is is very disheartening. That on a day like this, that we be celebrating Christmas, so mm -hmm. many people are crying just because they lost their loved ones. And that to me is very very well And we we'll continue to hammer on this on the government to the right. Let me go to the Fubara. Yes, the quickly Fubara. Well, I'm I'm, I'm not surprised uh, by what Fubara is saying. So obvious that this man himself. Um, I don't know. The lack, lack of all doesn't even know what he's doing. Probably that was why Wiki saw the Wiki in him mm. and picked him as a you know. But That is new. I, I feel that Wiki must have seen that Wiki in him, that this one can be manipulated. He cannot be able to be a man of himself. Because if you have people fighting for you and say that this is wrong, are you coming out to say, oh, that we are going to bring to the letter, we thank the president for what we have done? Are you know that you are just working on the line line? Then who are we? So, if the man that's, that is in, in the heart of the problem is saying that he has no problem there, I think besides that, those of us have been fighting and talking that this is not realizable, we just keep quiet and let's wait and see what is going to happen. That is for me, for, for because. But after is, is here, that not a threat to democracy? 
is that not a threat to democracy? Because if we let him do what he's doing and it is, uh, is not right, it means that it will be a reference point tomorrow. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, you are talking, my brother, who gains the more? In this, in this, you are talking about democracy. Who is going to gain the more? Is it not the government? Am I doing anything? If, say, if river state is secured, in what sense will that be able to affect you? We, as Nigerians, we as journalists, have come to us to say that this is unconstitutional. This is not right. But the man himself, the governor, the chief executive of the state, he said that it is right, that is the right thing. Do you know that some um, uh, elders, um, as senior elders in uh, River State, have gone to court to challenge that agreement? About six of them have gone to court. I know that Kada and Julio, SA, uh, uh, the senior advocate of Nigeria, is, on, is taking that, has taken that case to a federal court, high court in Abuja to challenge that agreement. But the governor, with the, what he said, that he made a he made a statewide broadcast to the people of River State yesterday that he totally agreed that is not uh, so what he has agreed is not something is uh, possible that is not slavery that is going to do everything humanly possible to actualize. It. Then all will have but let me say it again. I think I've said it time and time on this program that he who rides on the back of a tiger most of the time ends up this. So if you feel that he's comfortable with 26 uh, APC legislators and um, taking over the uh, house, is he comfortable in and bringing back all the governor, uh, the commissioners, as it were, and um, the status quo remaining. All well and good, I wish him the best of luck. But tomorrow, let him not come and shout again and tell Nigerians that, oh, I'll be persecuted and the rest of them because we're not listening to them. <laughs> so, Kwanko yeah. is praying for, <laughs> for a favorable <laughs> judgment. Yeah. Right, prayer. You know, we pray a lot in this country. Mm. We pray. My dear sister, you know now, yes. everything no we fire prayer. Mm. Everything, prayer, prayer. We, we pray more than other. Where other countries are working. Doing the work. Doing the work. Mm. Our own wisdom. Even though that gave us the, the religion, those in Mecca, those in uh, Israel, and they gave us this religion that right. they do more work than praying. But our own, everything. Right. Uh, pray than do the work. Yeah, we're praying. Even even the federal workers are giving Christmas. And that after, they capitalize on it. They will yes. They capitalize on it. They are practically three things they work on. Religion, ethnicity. Yes. Those they use it effectively. Mm -hmm. Which is why you not see that. Was there anything happening? You just say, leave it to God. Somebody is coming to kill you. You say, leave it to God. <laughs> Somebody has done something. You say, leave it to God. And we continue leaving it to God. If we leave everything to God, then what is the place of man? Why did God give us this it's sense? Free will. Why, did give us the, uh, why did He give us the free will to be mm -hmm. able to do certain? So I don't. Want, I, 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 I'm not too. I'm not the too religious. I'm a really. I'm, I'm a Christian, but there is a limit to which I do things. I leave everything. Certain things God has given me the brain to be able to. So I cannot leave it to God. There are certain things I should be able to do. But if some people believe that leave everything to God, that is all oh, well and good. I have no problem with them. But for every action, there's always a reaction. Mm. All right, let's move over to the next paper. Let's look at the nation. And I think this would interest uh, quite a number of people because it did interest me. Um, federal government extends the 50% rebate to non-luxury buses, bus passengers in Abuja. So um, last week, the federal government had talked about slashing the prices for people who want to travel to go see their family, their friends, their loved ones. And then um, the people on the trains is zero is at zero cost. So they can go on the trains and they don't have to pay anything for their travels. But um, they mentioned about five companies saying that these five companies are to cater for the people that they're looking for, they're looking to, and they're looking at, which is about five million um, Nigerians to be able to travel. And they give them 50% off now. Yamgo said it is a scam, right? <laughs> it's always a scam. I said, um, let's be hopeful. I go to my stylist. My stylist said he knows people who went without this 50%. They traveled at the same time and they did not, they did not get the 50% off. Now, the federal government is extending its, you know, the 50% rebate to non-luxury buses as well. But what do you think of all of this? And is this just maybe a way for them to add more money to what they're already taking out? The, question, the first question you ask yourself, where is the money coming? Mm -hmm. We asked that last week. <laughs> that we is did. the question we asked. You ask yourself, where is the money coming from? It, is, it was not budgeted. 
Right. Uh, it was not part of the boy. So where is it coming from? Is it yeah. from the central bank? Uh, miscellaneous. Is it from the Somewhere bank? down there. Maybe is it from the Ministry of Material mm -hmm. Affairs or what? All this thing, but personally, I just feel that it's a scam for me. As far as I can cut it. I don't know how they are going about it. But the fact remains that if go and check out how much is being used for this, and you ask yourself, because and also how much we are using for palliatives. When you put all this together, compare it to the money from the removed from subsidy, and you come to realize that it may even be more than what you remove from subsidy, as for goodness sake. Then at the end of it, what is the essence of removing the, the trillion subsidy? And this is something that will benefit just less than 1% of the Nigerian people. Unlike the petroleum subsidy that everybody benefits from. Yes. So to me, this is more like, yes, that, to me, this is a, more like a, a, a policy of a sort. It does not make any sense. How many people are going to travel um, for this period? And, okay, let us even stay. Okay, after they travel and come back, what happens? Will their problem be solved? After the 50% have been removed. Now, some, I had that some of the... And some of the people have already complained that when they get to the bus station, that, they, that, that, that there is limited number of people that they can carry. So if their location was given them for 50, so if you have about 100 people or 100, I'm talking of those that I don't use, I've not been using the buses. For those that were in the sense, some of them cannot be able to access that. So, but I believe this is not the way to go about it. Let us have a right a, a, a policy that can benefit every Nigerian. And I have said the time I turn number that the issue of the removal of petroleum sources is the greatest problem problem had. Yes. Uh, this for us to be able to look at the shenanigans and the and corruption around it. If we are able to curb it, there is no country in the world that, that doesn't have some in 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 in, in, in Germany. Mm. Power is subsidized. Germany power, I mean electricity, is subsidized. Yeah. In the United States, they subsidize um, agriculture products and some other things. The same thing with other, even the United Kingdom and the rest of them. So many. So you ask yourself, you as a Nigerian, what do you gain from your government? Mm -hmm. And they continue to increase taxes, taxes every day. Mm. And you don't see what they do with taxes. So for me, all well and good, if that is just a populist uh, uh, this thing by the government, all well and good, but for me, it's neither here nor there. Come and see what is happening. We said it when this issue was going on, when they were doing this. Go and see the scam that is going on in the Ministry of uh, Material Affairs. The yes, last one. Yes. Ministry, as it were, was fraudulent in most of the things they were doing. A ministry that was telling that they were feeding our children while they were at home. <laughs> How do you, is it possible? Yeah. Now we have seen, talk about 13 billion naira fraud. We've talked about 157 billion naira fraud and everything, and now it's coming to light. That is just one out of so many other things that you talk about. And we talk of corruption. The biggest elephant in the house for us in this country is corruption. Right. Able to handle that, every other thing. <laughs> but for me, back to this issue of quality for 50%, I don't believe in it. I hope it works for some people. Well, we only hope it works and um, we hope the federal government has to roll out an initiative that could cut across everyone and not just some select The that they promised, the that they promised, where are they? Mm. Where are the that well, promised? Have you seen this thing apart, apart, apart from Bonu State? Apart from Bonu State, have you mm. seen this thing sharing me palliative? Um. Apart from Bonu State? Check I haven't check personally. I haven't personally. I haven't. Yeah. But anyways, like I say, we we just hope that they start to roll out these initiatives that would work for everybody. And I mean, everybody can benefit from the country. Because I one of the the questions you asked was, what do we benefit from this country? So hopefully we start to benefit. But this is where we have to wrap up this segment. Thank you so much for joining us and reviewing the papers with us this morning. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Yeah. Hopefully, it's that same prayer that we are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep praying. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. <laughs> All right, we'll be speaking with Chris Kende Wandu. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, and he was joining us from here, from Lagos State here. Um, we'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be talking to another guest in our hot topic. Please stay with us.